live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening. Tasmanians are being warned to brace for sweltering conditions with emergency services enacting a major response plan in the state's south. In developing news, Hobart City Council is closing seven parks and reserves ahead of tomorrow's heat wave. It's a different story on the east coast, smashed with over 100 millimetres of rain today, wreaking havoc across St Helens and beyond. A summer storm smashing St Helens, the deluge leaving 2,000 properties without power this afternoon. While parts of the Tasman Highway and Penray Place were shut off around midday thanks to flooding, 140 mils of rain hitting St Helens Airport. Thunderstorms in the northeast today were quite, uh, quite weird really. They just lingered in a very, very localised spot. It's two properties that have been impacted and five people that have been affected. Quite the contrast down south, currently on the cusp of the hottest day seen in a year. Temperatures expected in the mid 30s. Particular concern is the Upper Durham Valley, Midland, South East and East Coast, so quite a big area of Tasmania. Um, and we're expecting that, that that high fire danger to extreme fire danger will continue through the afternoon into the evening. The toasty temps prompting the TFS to suspend fire permits until Friday, with a total fire ban in place for the south from 2am tomorrow until Sunday. As crews ready themselves for potential bushfires with aerial and ground capabilities. Oh, these are the worst fire predictions we've had for this summer. But it's not just humans in the firing line. Wildlife sanctuaries expect to receive an influx of calls as temperatures soar. And look, I think older animals particularly uh, are going to struggle and really young animals but even just down to um, something that's sort of found in a pouch and maybe left exposed. On We're urged to leave water out for wildlife and slow down on roads. Or it might be a case of just saying I've, I've seen roadkill there near a waterway multiple times I'm always going to slow down when I drive past. It. Taking care of each other also front of mind for emergency services urging us to have bushfire plans in place and monitor warnings. Ruby Cairns, 7 Tasmania News. Jeremy Rockcliffe is hoping half-price bus fares can entice more Tasmanians onto public transport as the state election campaign rolls into its second week. The Liberal ticket is still the topic of discussion as Labor seizes on controversial candidates. With public confidence in Metro down, the Liberals have a plan to fill seats. All bus fares and public transport will be halved. Average bus fare could be $3.50 now $1.75 for a day. The measure would be in place with all providers for a year, with another $15 million put into expanding metro services. We want to uh, incentivise public transport as we continue to innovate. This is from a minister who's essentially driven public transport into the ground with a huge number of cancellations of services across the state. Labor matching the plan, continuing its war on the cost of living, committing to energy efficient measures in public housing and incentivising private landlords to do the same. People in Tasmania's cold winters are making choices between whether or not they can afford to turn their heater on at night or pay for food and medicines for their family. With small businesses still shaken from tough economic conditions, <laughs> the Liberals are serving up extra grant funding and a promise to cut red tape. But they're also facing questions about BAS candidate Dr Julie Sladden, an outspoken critic of vaccine mandates. This is someone who attacked Jeremy Rockliffe relentlessly during a massive crisis in Tasmanian and worldwide history. I welcome a range of views. Um, we have announced candidates from all walks of life. When asked about her remarks, Dr Sladden said she's pro-personal choice. Two more independents have entered the race. Child safety advocate and former Greens candidate Jack Davenport will run in Bass, while Hobart City Councillor Louise Elliott has nominated for Clark. At times controversial for her views on transgender issues, it was a Liberal Party pledge to allow pets in rentals that prompted her to resign as a member of that party. The policy is so uh, in contrast to what I've been passionately advocating against, so it was just something that had to be done. The crossbench possibility is growing, with it more likely than ever to help form a government. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. And Bass Independent Lara Alexander is backing calls from action group Loud Fence for all public servants to be held accountable in the wake of the Commission of Inquiry into Child Sexual Abuse. 
Ms Alexander says all Bass state election candidates should declare their stance. The Commission of Inquiry has identified people in senior positions that have not necessarily committed the um, crimes themselves, but have walked past and have turned a blind eye. By no means a foregone conclusion that the new government uh, will in fact uh, make public servants accountable for these catastrophic failures in governance. Mr Donaldson is a victim survivor of child sexual abuse committed in the 1970s in Queensland. And leading child advocates from Australia and New Zealand have joined in Hobart to call for isolated detention of children and young people to be reformed. Coming months after the damning Commission of Inquiry, other jurisdictions say they're closely watching how we respond to the findings. A meeting of minds constantly thinking about child safety in what can be a lonely job. Providing peer support to each other across state boundaries and across jurisdictions uh, means not only that we're protecting our own and our staff's well-being, but we're identifying best practice. Hobart hosting the biannual catch-up of children's commissioners, guardians and advocates from Australia and New Zealand. These are people who are entrusted with looking after the rights and well-being and safety of children and young people. Tasmania's dark secrets also in the spotlight in the wake of a scathing commission of inquiry into child sex abuse, which slammed the practices and government institutions for failing to protect children. A response watched carefully in other jurisdictions. A very strong plan, a very solid plan. Uh, if it can be implemented, uh, then you will be leading. I'll be watching uh, what happens here with interest. Visitors say there are common issues both here and across the ditch. Issues around poverty, around social care and inclusion, issues when it comes to not having a focus on child-friendly justice. They may not have enough teeth or breadth of legislated function to do what they need to do, and usually resources are a limiting factor. The group also ramping up their pressure to reform the controversial practice of isolated detention. Their joint communique calls for national standards to be introduced, along with greater transparency. Australia needs a national definition and a way to track and measure how we are isolating children. We're seeing too many young people being um, criminalised and recriminalised. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. A new service is equipping businesses with tools to help manage their employees' mental health. From conflict resolution and mediation to self-care workshops, Relationships Australia Tasmania will create a unique plan for each company to improve work-life balance. The more that you can do to support people to, to improve their well-being and their mental health, um, what it means is that they're able to, to be their best and do their best when they come to work. The average person spends 90,000 hours at work during their life. A young couple renovating their home in Newnham has received quite the surprise after discovering a tombstone in their kitchen. The unusual find shocking even seasoned builders, leaving some unanswered questions. Renovating can be full of surprises. For Gemma and Jamie Free, it was a long-awaited remodelling. We've been wanting to do the kitchen since we bought the house six years ago. It was a bit of an eyesore, very old 50s slash 80s combination of hodgepodgery. Tradies pulled the kitchen apart, but the unusual find was made days later. It was discovered out the back of the gravestone that was in the bench top and flipped it up and here lies Charlotte Taylor. Gemma unsure at first what to make of the tombstone on which she'd been chopping her vegetables. When we bought the house we thought this is a nice piece of marble, this can be our chopping board. It makes sense why some of our stuff, you know, appliances maybe didn't last as long as they should have. It was probably her hauntiness telling us to stop making food on her gravestone. <laughs> Charlotte Taylor Nee Parsons died in 1934 after living most of her life at Deloraine. Her great-granddaughter, Andrea O'Connor, believes she knows how her tombstone ended up as a kitchen bench. All I can come up with was when Charlotte's husband died and a new plaque was made, the old one was taken off and a new one replaced. And maybe somebody thought this is a valuable piece of marble, we'll take it. 
Ms O'Connor's cousin, a whisky maker, has an idea for putting the tombstone to work again. They've got a lovely whisky distillery down at Tamashanta. I said, why don't you make a whisky, call it the Charlotte Taylor, have the tombstone outside, they get tourists. What a coup, eh? An odd discovery to raise a glass to. Melinda Ogden, 7 Tasmanian News. Tasmanian students have tasted glory ahead of the professionals posing with the Women's National Cricket League trophy. The Ruth Preddy Cup touring primary schools to inspire our next generation of athletes ahead of this weekend's final. Scrambling to get their hands on a prized piece of silverware, the Women's National Cricket League trophy coveted since 1966, excursioning to Belle Reve Primary. The Tasmanian Tigers travelling with it, schooling students on Saturday's final against Queensland Fire. I think it's been really cool to get to some schools and really build some hype around the game and a lot of people don't know that it's on so yeah it's really cool to build some awareness. You always get the how old are you and what how many runs have you scored and how many wickets but I guess yeah they just want to know everything about you. Their presence a point to young players about Tasmania's sporting possibilities. To show that you can be successful in sport I think that's um, it's really special especially yeah, um, amongst women and girls to know that there is a path to elite sport. Today's meet and greet, a bit of fun before the Tigers bring out their claws, striving to secure victory for a third consecutive year. The Queensland have got some impressive domestic players. They play really well in the T20 format as well, so they'll, they'll be up for the contest. These little fans forced to bear three more sleeps before finding out which side takes the trophy home. Brianna Boylan, 7 Tasmania News. Launceston well, residents are being asked to be upfront about death, burial and graves in a key community survey by the City Council. It's looking for a variety of viewpoints to help inform future planning and management of facilities. They're probably things that we don't talk about on a day-to-day -day basis. People can feel comfortable to come and talk about what they're seeing, what they're feeling and what they're viewing at places like, like Car Villa. Questions about curbside collection, natural disaster planning and recreational trails will also be asked. Residents can log on to Council's website to participate. A high-intensity music and dance performance is coming to Hobart's Theatre Royal as part of Monofoma. Choreographed by Townsville company Dance North during COVID, Wayfinder premiered in 2022 and is now touring Australia. The production, described as magical and exciting, and it attempts to break down barriers between the artists and audience. What we wanted to do was create a work that was truly celebratory, really inclusive and reminded people of this joy of being human. There's three shows of Wayfinder over the next, from Thursday through to Saturday night. Um, 700 seats in the theatre, so hopefully we'll fill as many as we can. Prices have been slashed for attendees under 30 years old thanks to an affordable ticket initiative. With cost of living pressures affecting many Tasmanians, acquiring children's toys to support learning might be out of reach for some. A northern Tasmanian community group is hoping to address that with a mobile toy library. Ensuring equal access to toys to help a child's development. A mobile toy library service is set to begin in the West Tamar for children up to the age of four. So the whole idea is just to try and support people to help their children develop strong enough language skills. Each item has been chosen to aid in language development through sensory experiences, housing everything from hands-on toys to books, all for $20 a year. It makes all the difference and it doesn't take much time. It's like 10, 15 minutes a day of one-on-one -on -one play. The van will make fortnightly stops at six locations posted on West Tamar Rotary's website. There are outlying areas of our municipality that, that don't get those services and this is where a library like this is so beneficial. The toy library will be launched here at the Exeter Show this weekend. The Show Society happy to help launch a much needed service. This West Hamer Rotary uh, Toy library, library will be a really good benefit to um, the, the children and the families in the area. Show organisers also expecting a large number of people keen to enjoy a day at a country fair. We've got the largest number of exhibitors that we've had for quite some time. Mark Zeta, 7 Tasmania News.
the Tigers are on cloud nine, saying there's a great vibe around the group this week as they prepare to thrash it out with Queensland at Blunston on Saturday for their third straight WNCL title. They've got some real mongrel players in their squad, so I'll be looking forward to seeing what they bring to the, to the game. But uh, yeah, we've got a lot of experience, a lot of people who are also up for the fight. Stullenberg's a seasoned finalist now, appearing in both previous wins, including a 75-run knock last year. She says the one thing to expect on Saturday is the unexpected. The Hobart Chargers are turning to an experienced trio as they gun for NBL 1 finals. Kayla Steindl returning to the women's team following a stellar 2023 with some unfinished business to take care of. Last season was sort of our goal to break into the finals and unfortunately we came up short of that towards the end of um, last season. So yeah, we've definitely got um, more to prove this year. Jack Jumper, Jacob Richards and veteran Ollie Angerstein are also back on court for the men. Really excited. A lot of guys from last year are coming back. Hopefully we can have a good culture and have a good season. The boys really like started showing up last year, so I reckon that's going to happen this year again and they're going to be even better. The new season tips off in April. The Tridents are sitting just outside the top five of the Bowls Premier League after a mixed bag of results, including a much-needed win over third-placed Melbourne Pulse. Tassie shocking the Pulse with a huge second-set effort to send the match into a tie-break, which the Tridents were able to claim with ease. They play the other Melbourne team tonight for a chance to jump back into finals contention. Good evening. Hope you've had a good Wednesday. Don't know if we can say that for residents of the East Coast with plenty of thunderstorm activity there. We've already seen that on the news tonight. Hobart 31, Launceston Reach 29, Devonport 26 and Burnie 25. 32 was the top at Grove and Bushy Park as some temperatures peaked at 9 above average. Strawn had 29, the Islands 28, Friendly Beaches 24, Lowhead 23 and St Helens recorded 21 degrees. But... 147 millimetres. That's been the rainfall at St Helens for the past 31 hours, well to 4 o'clock anyway, as we see that cumulonimbus cloud over the east coast. A large area of thunderstorms over eastern and northern parts of the country as well. Not much elsewhere to speak of. Tomorrow a cold front approaches our west coast, the consistent pattern of troughs there over the mainland. Winds nor nor'easterly and increasing ahead of a west to northwest change at 30 knots. A strong wind warning has been posted from St Helens all the way around to Stanley. And we have a fire weather warning for the southeast, east coast, Midlands and Upper Derwent Valley where an extreme fire danger exists. Forecast for tomorrow, becoming windy and partly cloudy for Hobart, but boy, 36 degrees, 36 also for Signet and New Norfolk. Launceston, a high tomorrow of 30, a late shower moving in, partly cloudy for Devonport, 26 the top and 31 for Campbelltown. 25 for Burnie and partly cloudy, a windy day and a shower for Strawn, 30 the top and 29 for Smithton. St Helens tomorrow, partly cloudy and 30, 33 for Swansea, Fingal, 31 degrees. Now a shower in the west and through Bass Strait on Friday, otherwise fine. A fine sunny start to the weekend with light winds and on Sunday, a morning shower in the west but fine and partly cloudy the rest. Sunny and warm in Perth and Adelaide, a late cool change after 38 in Melbourne. Partly cloudy weather for Sydney, 29 the top. A sunny 32 in Brisbane, a possible storm for Darwin. And conditions quite warm at the moment, 28 in Hobart, Launceston 27 and the same in Devonport. Uh, the fire service, Kim, they've got a lot of alerts out for tonight and tomorrow and there is the chance of some dry lightning in the central and southern districts, so be aware. Mm. And take care everyone and that is all we have time for for now. Good night.